Today we'll be looking at the Lords of the Armoury, the Tech Marines of the Omnisire. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. Now Tech Marines are one of the few units in Codex Space Marines that we haven't looked at yet, so I thought it was high time that we paid them a visit. They're most certainly a very useful unit to have around in any sort of mechanised gun line, as well as being one of the cheapest HQs the Space Marines have to offer, which makes them great for filling battalions. In this video we'll take a look at their rules on the tabletop, any obvious synergies, combos and buffs that we can do to make them better, and how I can and do use them myself in an army. We'll also be taking a quick look at Servitors as well as part of the video, as the two work in tandem quite so much. In the background, a chapter's aspiring tech marines will journey to Mars, where they begin the long arduous journey of being inducted into the machine cult. Years of separation often mean that tech marines stand somewhat removed from their battle brothers, as they have dual loyalties, both to the chapter and to the Omnisire. This additional training really pays off though, because as well as having all the fighting prowess of any of their battle brothers, tech marines are absolutely essential to the functioning of the chapter ensuring their battle tanks and vehicle machines are up to good calibre, and even enacting battlefield repairs on the spot. The chapter's highest ranking tech marine is known as the Master of the Forge, who oversees their organisation within the chapter. Tech marines are often accompanied onto the battlefield by servitors, monotasked cybernetic slaves, that exist purely to help the tech marines in their duties. Some function as tools and heavy lifting equipment for their tech marines, to help them repair vehicles in the field of battle and others are wired up to heavy ordnance to provide some fire support, and lay down a hail of fire to leave the tech marine undisturbed to perform their duties. So let's see what they can do on the battlefield. Tech marines are of course an HQ choice for Codex Space Marines, and they'll cost you just 45 points to field one, which really isn't too bad considering they fill an HQ slot, and they come with some pretty snazzy war gear built in. At base, each tech marine is armed with a bolt pistol, power axe, servo arm, frag grenades and crack grenades, they have a slightly interesting Space Marine Hero stat line, a movement of 6, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, so better at shooting than fighting, strength 4, toughness 4, 4 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 8, and a 2-up save. The 2-up save is particularly helpful as it means that small arms and infantry melee attacks are unlikely to shift them fast. That servo arm grants a single additional attack that attacks at the profile of a thunder hammer, but only with AP-2 rather than AP-3. The flat 3 damage and times 2 strength really means that they have the potential to put a crippling punch on a vehicle if they get lucky. In particular, the single extra high power attack synergizes quite well with the Salamanders or Master Artisans traits, as being able to reroll full hits and wounds for this single powerful punch means that it's really quite reliable to put a wound on your opponent. Other than this, the Tech Marine has a few different options. He can take weapons off the melee weapons list, such as swapping out that power axe for a chainsword. Sorry, I think I might have made a slight error earlier. The base 45 point cost is him with a chainsword, not with a power axe. If you wanted to field him with a power axe, then it's 50 points rather than 45. Typically, I tend to keep him fairly cheap either with the power axe or with just the chainsword, rather than giving him any more fancy tech, as he does only hit on threes. But it wouldn't be the end of the world to give him a power fist or something to make him a pretty credible melee threat. Other than this, he can swap out his bolt pistol for a bolt gun, or one item on the pistols or combi weapons list. I typically take the bolter over the pistol if you have the choice. It actually lets him contribute a little bit with his high ballistic skill to extra firepower, and the pistol rule very rarely comes into effect. You don't really want this guy in close combat in the first place if it can be avoided. You certainly can give him a combi weapon to take advantage of the high ballistic skill. Something like a combi plasma or melter would be fun. But as with most of the time, my favourite is the storm bolter. As two points to give him four shots when he's standing still due to bolter discipline, it's a very nice little upgrade for only two points. Finally, you have the option to take a full servo harness. This gives him a flamer, plasma cutter and extra servo arm, and will cost you an additional 11 points overall. The extra servo arm attack is generally a pretty credible extra melee threat, the Flamer can help out a little against some encroaching enemy chaff, and the Plasma Cutter is essentially the same stat line as a Plasma Pistol, except it's Assault 1 rather than a Pistol, which is pretty handy because it means that you can fire it in addition to the rest of his weapons. All of this means that your Tech Marine can actually be fairly shooty at close range, one Plasma Shot, one Flamer Shot, and potentially four Storm Bolter Shots, which really isn't too bad at all for a 58 point model. In most optimised lists, people tend to generally issue this option to spend the points elsewhere, but I think it's a little bit underrated, it can make him a bit more of a credible threat both at range and at melee when the enemy gets close, and certainly means that you can't ignore the tech marine anywhere near as much as you could before that. 
So for me, it's kind of a take or leave option. Fine to include it, fine to leave it off. You can see from this data sheet that the Tech Marine can also take a conversion beamer. This is now a Warhammer Legends option, so it isn't available in the current codex. I found that a bit of a shame because it was certainly an interesting way to run a Tech Marine, giving him some extra powerful anti-tank shooting. That couldn't be targeted by your opponent because he is of course a character. Certainly a fun little option that can certainly be worth the points. If you're playing with Legends, a good way to provide a bit of extra anti-tank on an HQ that wouldn't usually be able to do so. The Tech Marine has the normal Angels of Death special rule, meaning that he has Bolt Discipline for those Bolter or Storm Bolter shots. Combat Doctrines, which will generally help him out in the Tactical Doctrine most, with extra AP on the Flamer, Plasma Cutter, and any Bolt weapons he has. And Shock Assault, meaning that he'll typically have 4 attacks on the charge. Now aside from his actual fighty abilities, the main reason people bring Tech Marines is of course his ability to repair vehicles. The Blessing of the Omnisire special rule, or basically pile deep three mortal wounds on an injured vehicle that he's within one inches of at the end of the movement phase. This means that a Tech Marine is great to be hiding amongst some of your armoured units, where he can move to the one that's taking damage currently, and put a few more wounds back on it so your opponent has to chew through more, while also being a reasonable little fighty character that you can use as a counter charge threat. There are a few variations on the Tech Marine datasheet amongst the different codexes. There is an index datasheet for a Tech Marine on bike that has now been moved to Warhammer Legends as well, so if you're playing with that, you can also field him with a bit more fast movement. He also gains an extra wound, but this costs you the premium of 25 points extra, so he's 70 points base. There's also slight variations on the Blood Angels one from Legends, and the Grey Knights Tech Marine, which we'll get onto in a second. Moving on to Servitors now, the Tech Marine's little attendant helpers. These guys are an elite slot for Codex Space Marines. These guys are an elite's choice and cost just 5 points per model. They've got a fairly underwhelming stat line with a movement of 5, weapon skill and ballistic skill of 5+, plus, strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, 1 attack, leadership 6 and a 4 plus armor save. And at base they're just equipped with a servo arm which is currently free in the current rules. If you just have the cheap 20 point squad, they're only going to be hitting on 6s with those servo arms because they are minus 1 to hit, unless they happen to be next to a tech marine which will make them Ballistic Skill and Weapon Skill 4+, plus, but even then they'll still only be hitting on 5s, so it could put on a surprise little extra bit of damage, but still in melee they aren't exactly overwhelming, and they're fairly fragile. Two of them, and only two, can take heavy weapons, either the Heavy Bolter, Multi Melter, or Plasma Cannon, though they aren't a particularly efficient place to take heavy weapons, as they only hit on 4s rather than 3s, and that's only if they're next to a Tech Marine, and generally Space Marine weapons are pointed at being taken on a Ballistic Skill 3+, plus platform, not 4+. plus so you might not get the best bang for your buck here. Out of the options, I'm most a fan of the plasma cannons, which have very good efficiency for the amount of damage that they output, and they have reasonable range as well. They also have the advantage here of you not caring too much when they overheat, as it's far less important for a plasma cannon to blow up and kill a servitor than if it was blowing up and killing a whole space marine, so you can afford to be a bit more trigger happy with them. Unfortunately, unlike previous editions, they don't actually help out the Tech Marine with their repairs at all, which I find a bit of a shame, as that's what they do in the fluff. Note that they don't have the Angels of Death special rule, so they won't be getting the benefits of Shock Assault for extra attacks with those servo arms, and won't get any extra AP for the Devastator Doctrine for those heavy weapons. They really are just the damage output and profile that you see. I do think that they have some uses, though. A few cheap squads with a plasma cannon or two could actually put a decent amount of wounds on vehicles over the game, particularly if you have more threatening threats in your army that allow them to go unscathed for a few turns, or you could just take them as 20-man throwaway units that could be used to screen out other units, camp on backfield objectives, or fill out elite detachment slots, either to fill up brigades or to allow you to use relic forge world units, so you certainly can use them in competitive lists, and I have seen them run from time to time. So let's take a look at how we can get more out of our tech marines on the field of battle. Firstly, we'll start with talking about chapters, and there are a few options spread between the various flavours of Space Marine that we have access to. The Tech Marines will basically help out the armoury of any chapter, but some do have some special synergies. Perhaps most prominent amongst the machine-orientated chapters are the Iron Hands, who do have access to Iron Father Phyros, who is kind of like a massively upgraded Tech Marine in himself, as he heals a flat 3 wounds, and has greatly upgraded shooting, melee, and survivability over Tech Marines, although this does come at over double the cost. As a chapter that's really focused on fielding large numbers of vehicles, and the vehicles can be incredibly tough between various spells, stratagems, and their 6 plus feel no pain, stacking extra wounds on Iron Hand's vehicles is particularly potent. They have a warlord trait called Adept of the Omnisire that allows you to add plus 1 to repairs, and you can upgrade their Omnisian Axe to an Axe of Medusa, which makes it strength plus 3 and damage 3, so it can really make the Tech Marine a credible melee threat. 
They also have the Fortis Pattern Data Spike, which allows you to roll 2d3 and pick the highest for the repair rolls, which to be honest isn't the biggest buff in the world numbers wise, but it does make it a bit more reliable. Finally, they also have the Machine Empathy Stratagem, that can allow a Tech Marine to repair a vehicle a second time, but they did change it in the FAQ, meaning that he has to do it to two different vehicles, not just piling loads and loads of wounds back on the same one, as that created some interesting problems with unkillable regenerating Leviathans. Perhaps surprisingly, one of the other chapters with some of the most interesting Tech Marine rules is the Grey Knights. This is for two reasons. Firstly, the Grey Knight's Tech Marine is also Psyker, though he is locked into taking the choice of the full servo harness, meaning that he's 71 points base, but for that you do get the Flame of Plasma Cutter Power Axe and two servo harms. Considering he's basically being a librarian and a tech marine in one, this is a bit of a steal for the points, though it does have to be said that Grey Knight's vehicles aren't the strongest, perhaps he might be able to help out their Dread Knights a little. The Grey Knights also have a new relic from their Psychic Awakening book, which is the Etheric Conduit, where he can put 2d3 wounds back on a vehicle rather than d3, meaning that on average he can heal more than the Iron Hands can, which is kind of funny. Again, this is hampered by Grey Knights not having the strongest vehicles on the whole, but it's really not a bad combo for 71 points and one relic slot. For the Space Wolves, we have the Iron Priest, a tech marine who's locked into using a Tempest Hammer rather than his normal war gear, and also has some other interesting options such as access to the Hellfrost Pistol. Rather than the usual Ballistic Skill 2 plus and Weapon Skill 3 plus, these are reversed, so he hits better in combat than he does at shooting, particularly with the Space Wolves chapter trait. This means that as well as being a, this guy is a really solid fighter in melee for his points cost, particularly as the Tempest Hammer didn't go up in points cost with the Thunder Hammer, so it's still pretty cheap on characters. Other than this, the chapters are largely best at just buffing the Tech Marine from their own traits. Ultramarines will be a bit better for moving and shooting with their bolt weapons due to their unique doctrine. White Scars will be able to get into combat a bit easier with advance and charge. Raven Guards will better hunt characters, should they get in your lines. We already mentioned that Salamanders and Master Artisans are amazing synergy with the Servo Arms and also Plasma Cossers if you have them. Imperial Fists and Crimson Fists will do better with any bolt weapons that the Tech Marines equipped with. Blood Angels will be stronger in melee. And interestingly, their Legends option has the option to take a jump pack on the Tech Marine. And Dark Angels can get some reroll wands and extra range on their guns. Moving beyond chapters now, as a fighty character, Tech Marines can absolutely get some support from any captains and lieutenants who happen to be hanging around. And if they're all hanging around buffing some tanks, then the three can be quite a fearsome prospect to fight if they go out to do a bit of counter charging. Apothecaries might also be able to heal them, but generally it's not going to be the best target of putting extra wounds back on characters if you have other options. There's one very interesting option that the Tech Marine gained from the Faith and Fury book, which is to become a Master of the Forge for one command point, which will boost his repair rolls from a D3 random roll to a flat 3. If you're running multiple vehicles, then this can be a really solid command point investment, essentially giving him an extra 50% increase on the wounds that he piles back on your tanks, while also making it less unreliable. Furthermore, from the same update, he can also be given the Warlord trait Master of Machines, which is a Tech Marine unique one that has a 6 inch aura of plus 1 to hit for vehicles. This ability is genuinely one of the strongest things that the Space Marines have to offer as a whole faction at the moment, and is absolutely top tier competitive, due to it giving plus 1 to hit to all the Space Marines biggest guns provided their own vehicles, in a huge aura that's very easy to get into. Incredibly strong, and I wouldn't be surprised to see if Games Workshop changed this in the spring update, which I'm hoping won't have come out before this video. There are a few other options from Faith and Fury. If you're interested, I did a full review on the Master of the Forge and the additional options they get in a previous video, so feel free to check that out if you'd like to see more. As characters, Tech Marines can be given Warlord traits and relics. Typically, they tend to be very good places to put any Warlord trait or relic that you want safe with your gun line, rather than fighty type ones where you've got a character that's getting tooled up to actually go out and smash the enemy. Things like command point reroll farming traits, such as the Tempered Helm or the Ultramarines one are absolutely great on a Tech Marine. In terms of relics, if the Tech Marine is absolutely essential to your strategy, particularly if you've made him a Master of Machines to buff your entire gun line, then increasing durability relics certainly isn't a bad shout. Things like the Adamantine Mantle could help save him a few wounds that he takes, but I'd typically only bother with these if I was really worried about Sniper Fire picking him off. In terms of stratagems, Tech Marines can use all the ones from the main codex that affect characters, such as Honor the Chapter and Only in Death, but in general, as a fairly cheap support character, they're not usually going to be the best receivers of these sort of buffs. Same with survivability type buffs, such as transhuman physiology, that's usually just going to be better targets. 
but they can be worth bearing in mind if you absolutely need a unit dead that the tech marine could likely kill, or if you absolutely need your tech marine to survive, and it's worth paying some command points to give him every chance. The main stratagems that I'd use on him are the aforementioned Master of the Forge and Hero of the Chapter to give him Master of Machines. So how would I use tech marines in game? Generally I'd certainly think about them if I had a decent amount of vehicles in my space marine army, particularly if I'm thinking about clustering them up to receive character buffs and things somewhere where the tech marine can easily get to them to put some wounds back on them. I generally tend to run my tech marine with just a chain sword and storm bolter and he's been very happy running with master of the forge and master of machines to make my tanks hit on twos to put out an absolutely brutal amount of firepower. Whether you're going down this strategy or not, Either way, I would still deploy the Tech Marine as near to all the vehicles as you possibly can, somewhere where he can manage to move within repair range of each one, to best assist the one that's taking damage, as you won't be able to determine that depending on which your opponent decides to shoot. If he either starts to run out of vehicles to repair, or if your opponent's army gets close to threaten your tank line, certainly think about using him as a counter-charge threat to have a chance of putting some extra damage on targets that he has a chance against, but obviously don't just throw his life away. With his durable 2 plus armor save, he can be a decent target against certain units, particularly if they're units without any AP, so he's saving on 2s versus a whole bunch of light infantry attacks. Certainly don't forget about his shooting, if he does have a storm bolter or bolter, he can be quite good for finishing off last annoying infantry members in squads without you having to dedicate more serious firepower to them. That hitting on 2s is particularly nice, and he can get quite a few shots if he doesn't have to move. Overall, I think that him, particularly with Master of Machines and Master of the Forge, is honestly one of the best value models that you can get in the entire Codex Space Marines, though I would certainly look out for any balance adjustments in the Spring Balance update, whenever that happens to come out. One potential contender for Tech Marines is actually the Thunderfire Cannon, as Thunderfire Cannons each come with a Tech Marine, and if you set up your vehicles next to your Thunderfire Cannons, those Tech Marines can actually repair those vehicles while still operating their cannon. These are a little bit less flexible, but if you can afford to deploy whatever tank or big vehicle you have near to your Thunderfire cannons, it can be a way of doubling up on getting some repairs and also getting some very scary ordnance into your list, so I would consider that as an alternative if you aren't looking to fill up HQ slots. So let me know what you think about Tech Marines down in the comments below. Certainly a year ago I wasn't expecting to say that these guys are some of the most competitive models in the game, but here you go. If you're interested in more 40k tactics videos, feel free to subscribe. We have regular 40k content coming out every day with plenty of stuff for Space Marines, so check back if you'd like to see more. If you'd like to support the channel and live in the UK, I do have an Element Games affiliate link down in the description below. If you're thinking about ordering any Warhammer from one of the discount retailers in the near future, and you'd like to help out the channel a bit, then consider giving this link a click before you make the order, as some of the profits go to Auspex Tactics without costing you any more at all. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.